Be Wealthy and Smart, episode 1303. into a world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom, or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. On today's show, we're going to talk about there's still no recession in sight. And that's because we got some fresh data, which was very telling, and some very good news. So first of all, a little bit of a recap. If you remember back when inflation started going crazy, it was back in 2021 when we were getting GDP or gross domestic product numbers, the rate of growth of the country from 3.3% at the low in the third quarter of 2021 to 7% in the fourth quarter of 2021. Then the GDP really slowed down and was negative in the first and second quarter of 2022, and then jumped up to between 2 and 3% for the last half of 2022. It stayed about the same in early 2023 at 2.2% and 2.1%, then jumped up to 4.9%. Now, the latest number that we got was for the fourth quarter of 2023, and that showed GDP growth was 3.3%. That's an annualized rate of growth that was significantly higher than what economists were expecting. You see, economists have been saying recession, 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 but the economy looks very strong, the consumer is very strong, and there doesn't seem to be any recession in sight. And so what we're hearing a lot now is talk of a soft landing. What is a soft landing? Well, that would be if the Fed could achieve economic growth where inflation returns to 2%, without a severe economic downturn. We might just get that. We have economic output at its highest levels in seven months, and we have jobless claims hitting the lowest level since September of 2022. Ian Shepardson with Pantheon Macroeconomics said the Fed will have to ease unless they have very good reasons to think the economy is about to re-strengthen or inflation somehow will rebound. We doubt those arguments can be made with confidence, So we expect the first easing in March or May. Well, we did have the futures markets predicting a high probability of a cut in March, and the probability has really come down quite a bit from the over 80% chance that it was before. Now we're under a 50% chance that the Fed will make its first rate cut in March. But the Fed is watching the numbers like we are, and so it depends on what the numbers say. We've had retail sales showing consumer spending finished 2023 better than many economists thought. Building permits rose by more than expected in December. And the labor market hasn't shown severe signs of cooling off. And as I said, the latest reading of weekly jobless claims hit its lowest level since 2022. Now today we will have the Personal Consumption Expenditures Index or PCE Index which is what the Fed prefers to look at for inflation. And it excludes volatile categories like food and energy and has been around 3% in December. If we've got inflation coming down and the economy staying strong, that's very bullish for the economy and for the stock market. And of course, being in an election year, that's no surprise that interest rates are going to be trending down and growth is going to be trending up. That seems to happen in the fourth year of the presidential election cycle which usually is the second best performing year out of the four-year cycle. Now, the most important part of the economy is the consumer, and the University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment Survey released Friday revealed a 13% jump in overall sentiment during January. It came in at a reading for the month of 78.8, which is the highest since July of 2021, and well above what economists were expecting. That puts the last two months at a cumulative 29% increase in the sentiment index. 
And that's the largest two-month increase since a recession that was occurring in 1991. This is because consumers believe that inflation has turned a corner and it's strengthening their income expectations. And they're seeing that if inflation is under control and interest rates are starting to come down, that the economy is moving in the right direction and things are going to improve for business, for housing, etc. So we'll continue to get data and report back to you how things are going with the economy. But so far, it looks like no recession in sight and things are looking good for that soft landing. If you haven't yet subscribed to Be Wealthy and Smart, hit the subscribe button and you'll be notified as soon as new podcasts are available. And all of my podcasts are on my website at lindapjones.com forward slash podcasts. And while you're there, sign up for my weekly newsletter for more tips for your financial freedom. That's all for today. Until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. Check out our website, blog, and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.